Andy Johnson. This is part two of my presentation, Create a Meeting with Print, Neurocognitive Approach to Reading Instruction. This is the so what part. So what? Based on the neurocognitive model, what should we do? Well, a couple of simple strategies. Reading is creating meaning with print. Remember, during the act of reading, almost 10 times more information is flowing down. We're using that information in the head than is flowing up. We use not a single queuing system, phonics, but three, syntax and semantics. So we want activities, yes, that we use phonics, but activities that develop these other two. And I'm going to show you some of these other two uh, activities for uh, to develop these other two queuing systems in just a minute. Strategy number one, read about things with which they are familiar so they can use what's in their head and all that information flowing down to develop their ability to recognize words. So they're reading about things in their lives, their experiences, using words and concepts with which they are familiar. That's how you develop their reading system. That means you have to have a lot of good books around, laying around for them to practice. It also means you need to have a lot of high-low books for your struggling readers or readers maybe from a second language, ELL learners, English language learners. Uh, high interest, uh, but low readability. Teach students to say blank when they encounter a word they do not know. I was working with a third grader. Last summer, she would stop at a word she didn't recognize. She'd begin to process every single letter. It would take her about 10 seconds. I taught her to say blank and move on, skip it, and just keep going on. Usually about two words later, she'd go back and she knew instantly what the word was. She'd go back and insert the word. She said, Dr. Johnson, your magic, the word just pops into my head. Well, I was teaching her to use semantics, which is much more efficient. And she could use the limited space and short-term memory to create meaning and to understand and to enjoy what she was reading. And we teach them specifically. I say, boys and girls, if you see a word you don't know, say blank. Let your eyes look for clues on both sides of the word. And we do these fun activities. The elf blank and hit his head. Look for clues on both sides. Boys and girls, what do you think it is? And we write some of those down. And then I give them a one letter clue. Want to change your ideas? Yes, the elf fell and hit his head. We teach it specifically. And we do a lot of maze and close activities to develop the semantic and syntactic cueing system. You'll see what these are. A maze is a sentence in which there are target words and students have either two or three choices to make here. These are very blank garden pots. Say blank, move on, you're using context. Then you have to go back and you have to look at the words, you have to analyze them and you're able to use context and do it very quickly. This pot is used blank cooking. Here I'm reinforcing sight words again using context. And I would do, I would say, six to eight of these, and I can use them to reinforce letter sounds, letter patterns, sight words, doesn't matter, pre and post reading activities. But this takes no more than eight minutes a day do it quickly, developing the semantic cueing system. Bob took his dog for a, this is an example of a close. A maze, you have choices, two or three words. A close has a word missing, or usually a word with a single letter. Bob took his dog for a blank. Hmm, what word makes sense there? Yes, Bob took his dog for a walk, and then you read it through uh, together. Tom did blank want to go. Tom did blank want to go. Hmm, Tom did not want to go. Here I'm reinforcing a sight word again. So that's the third one. The fourth is authentic writing activities. Writing is the best way to reinforce grammar in word order, which is the syntactic cueing system. And I'll show you a couple of them, but these are short 
three to 10 minute writing activities where students are given choice of writing topics to the greatest extent possible, and we embrace temporary spelling. Authentic writing is where students are describing their ideas. One strategy is called one sentence. Struggling readers and writers are sometimes overwhelmed when you say you have to write a paragraph. So you say, uh, Bob, we're going to write one sentence today. Boys and girls, we're going to write one sentence, one idea. Or with older students, sometimes I say we have a minimum of two sentences. What do you want to say today? And they're describing something. It could be something they did, something about the book. It doesn't matter as long as they are using writing to describing their ideas and their experiences. One sentence. Language experience approach is a great way for students to use their experiences to practice reading. It's a form of writing, but the student dictates to you. Boys and girls, what went on yesterday? Or Bobby, what did you do last night? As the student tells you individually or in group, you write it down. Usually I have a minimum number of sentences, three sentences, five sentences, and then we reread until fluency is achieved. So they're practicing reading their words and their experiences. And I can use short analytic phonics lessons, analyzing words within the context of the sentence. There's a word here that has a m, m in the middle of it. Can you find it? Can you find it? This is from an actual first grade student I was tutoring. We would start each session by reading the old story. We had a minimum of two sentences, and then we would write the new story. So every day we practice reading the old one and the new, and we are able to use analytic phonics. And this is a third grader. Again, practice the old one and the new. These are all words and experience that that student is telling me about using this to practice authentic reading and writing activities. The language experience approach or language experience activities. Then we can use analytic phonics. There's some words here that end with the d, d sound. Which words are they? Bird, die, d. Good. Sentence mix up. Simple sentences, three to five words. I can use it to reinforce letter sounds. If I was reinforcing the short O sound, we'd have some ah, uh, ah, uh, short O words in it. And we can give letter sound uh, clues. And I use them as pre and post reading activities. And I'll show you an example. And this develops the syntactic cueing system. With young children, I give a sentence, I like to play with toys, they cut them up, they mix them up, and they have to put the words in order. That's the semantic grammar and word order. With older students, you can give them the mixed up sentence and they have to write them in order. These should be quick, briskly paced. With younger students, I like using the word cards. Again, as pre and post reading activities, these sentences could be about the story. You could also take them from science or from what's going on in school. You can save them to use. You can have learning centers with mixed up sentences. You can do a lot of fun things with them. Sentence strips are always fun. A sentence where you write a sentence on a strip of paper, cut it up, and students have to put them back together again. Great small group activity, great learning center activity, sentence strips, pre and post reading activity. As a post-reading activity related to the book, giraffes are tall, mixed up sentences. Be the word, where you do the sentence strip, you give each child one of the words. They have to get themselves in order. When you tap their head, they say their word, and so you read the sentence. That's kind of fun. Older students, worksheets, keep it simple, keep it simple. The goal is to develop the syntactic cueing system. And when I'm working with students online, I use the computer, two to four sentences. I like using PowerPoint because you can do it quickly. Give them all the words and I say, tell me when you think you know what the word sentence is. Ran away the cat, the. And usually about here, they can say the cat ran away. And then we practice it until they can read that sentence fluency. 
And I like this because I can use them from year to year. It goes very quickly, it takes me eight minutes or so, and I can reinforce sight words or letter patterns or whatever I want to do. This is called sentence mix-up. I like using the screen because it happens so quickly. Sentence combining. Keep it short again. You have to combine two sentences and retain the meaning of both. Grammar and word order, but metacognition. Does this sentence make sense? For example, Billy went home. He was sad. They have to combine them. Billy was sad and he went home and retain the meaning of each grammar in word order. This is a very strong research-based strategy for teaching grammar. Combine them both. I can reinforce, for example, the ill phonogram here. I just included some ill words, spill, jill. Post-reading related to the stories. Great post-reading activity. Fanboys, these are connecting words. For, and, nor, but, oh, or yet so. You can actually get three sentences if you want. When I'm working with students, I like to use the names of students in the class as well. Sentence alteration. Writing activity, fun, related to the story, related to life. Could be fun, say the same thing using different words or word order. It's a great grammar strategy pre-post reading activity or reinforce a letter pattern. I like small groups because the conversation that takes place. Randy packed his lunch in a bag. How else can you say it? I make it a game. How many different ways can you say it? You've got four minutes. Start and stop. How many did you come up with? They read them aloud. Here's what I came up with. See if you came up with some of these. Limited only by your imagination. The thing is, they're creating meaning with print, grammar, syntax, word order. Please fill my glass. Again, the same thing. I did this to reinforce the uh, short I sound here, simply by including a short I word there. Journal writing, learning logs, literature logs. It's a daily writing space, uh, daily writing, and they're sharing. Uh, is a post-reading activity or simply uh, what did you notice today? What do you want to write about? Learning logs, I keep them in a special place apart from the desk. When they come in, I say grab your learning log as a post-reading activity. And uh, so it doesn't become lost or used for homework. Simple short writing activities, sharing, turn to a neighbor, share in small group, trade with a neighbor. Or if they're going to discuss something, boys and girls would be talking about this. Write your ideas down before we get ready for sharing. Just some ideas. Get them to respond to stories. If they're reading different books, they could describe a character or an interesting event. Learning logs or, or literature logs are multi-level in that everyone can be successful. And the last simple writing activity is a priming picture. Simply give students a picture. What do you want to say? What's happening here? Describe it. And they write underneath it. Now, the nice thing about this, if you're doing it in a large group, you can save them on a computer and you can use to practice the following day. You can print off individual pictures and students can write and they can use this for reading practice in a following day. All right. Just some activities based on the neurocognitive model of reading.